The movie begins by showing a bank robbery in progress. Two masked individuals are in the bank's yard, confronting two bank employees who are moving money into a vehicle. The robbers threaten the bank employees and demand they hand over the money boxes. One of the employees tries to resist and manages to uncover the mask of one of the robbers while trying to disarm them. Unfortunately, this causes the robber to accidentally shoot the resisting employee in the leg. The sound of the gunshot alerts nearby police officers to the ongoing robbery. Not wanting to be caught, the two robbers quickly grab one money box and rush towards their parked car, which is not far from the scene. The police officers who have heard the gunshot start chasing the fleeing robbers. When they reach a quieter area, one of the robbers intentionally stops the car and steps onto the road to fire at the pursuing police vehicle. The other robber, who has been recognized by the bank employees, is shocked by his accomplice's actions. This distraction leads to the police car crashing. One police officer exits the vehicle to save himself, while another remains inside, pleading not to be harmed as the robber points his weapon at him. In response to the officer's plea, the robber then strikes him until he loses consciousness. Later that evening, the two robbers, Pat Tate and Kenny, reach their hideout. Tate scolds Kenny for their failed robbery and for accidentally shooting a bank employee. Kenny, who was supposed to bring both money boxes, only brought one. He claims it was an accident, but Tate is furious, especially when he opens the stolen money box and finds only 2,500 pounds, far less than the 50,000 pounds euros he expected. Tate tells Kenny to leave and get rid of the car they used. Kenny refuses and demands his share of the stolen money. This angers Tate, who throws the money box at Kenny, injuring him. Disappointed with how Tate treated him, Kenny leaves to meet his informant, who turns out to be one of the money carriers from their previous hest. Kenny confronts his friend for giving wrong information about the money, threatening to kill him unless he eliminates the witness who saw Kenny during the robbery. The informant, fearing for his life, goes to the hospital where his friend is being treated for gunshot wounds inflicted by Kenny. However, he spots two detectives questioning his friend and decides to leave immediately. Meanwhile, Detectives Jones and Monroe show the bank employee several suspect photos from the robbery, and he identifies Kenny as the one he saw during the crime. In another part of town, Kenny visits a nightclub and meets a transgender entertainer named Billy the Kid to discuss their business plans. Billy asks Kenny to meet his boss, Mo, at the Platinum Lace Bar because Kenny's ordered items are ready. Kenny assures Billy that he will soon have the money to pay for these items. Moving on to Tate, he meets with David Hexel, the head of an illegal drug cartel, to explain that he hasn't been able to gather the 20,000 pounds David requested for their drug deal. Tate ends up borrowing money from David and promises to eliminate David's business rival while also paying back double the debt. Before leaving, David warns Tate not to involve Kenny, who tends to mess up their criminal plans. Shortly after Tate departs, David's girlfriend, Charlotte, reveals that she knows Tate, making David suspicious of her knowledge about his business associate. As for Tate, he calls Sam, Kenny's half-brother, to check on Kenny's condition. Sam claims he hasn't heard from Kenny, even though Kenny is with him at the time, as he doesn't want to deal with Tate for now. Kenny shares his plan to borrow money for his illegal drug business, but Sam initially refuses. Kenny persuades Sam about the business opportunity, and eventually, Sam agrees to lend £25,000. With the money in hand, Kenny rushes to meet Billy, who is training in boxing with his father, Fergus. Kenny shows the money to Billy, and they head to meet Mo to buy the illegal drugs they need. Meanwhile, Tate drives his car to meet David under a bridge, where he receives the package of illegal drugs he had requested earlier. David warns Tate to pay the agreed-upon price of £40,000 for the drugs and threatens consequences if Tate tries to escape. As for Kenny and Billy, they wait at Platinum Lace for Mo, one of the biggest drug lords in the country, to arrive. Kenny briefly asks Billy what would happen if his father, Fergus, found out he's transgender, and Billy suggests that his father might be surprised. When they finally meet Mo to complete the drug transaction, Mo betrays them by ordering his henchmen to attack Kenny and Billy. The next day, Kenny's body is discovered in a roller coaster seat by an amusement park guard. 
Tate, while checking on the illegal drugs from David, is shocked when he hears about Kenny's death from Kenny's mother, January. He rushes to the hospital to comfort her. Detectives Jones and Monroe approach Tate and ask him to identify Kenny's body. Aware of Kenny's criminal activities, they question Tate about his whereabouts during the robbery, and Tate is forced to lie, claiming he was at home. While Tate was at Kenny's home, grieving his late friend, he was surprised by the arrival of Kenny's friend named Joey Waller. Tate, suspicious that Joey might be involved in Kenny's murder, attempted to gather information about the killer. However, Joey claimed he had no knowledge of the person responsible for his friend's death. Hearing this, Tate asked Joey to help him find the mastermind behind Kenny's murder. That night, Tate met Sam in front of a nightclub to discuss Kenny's death. Sam, who had just learned the news, appeared shocked by Tate's words. The following day, they visited Johnny in prison to inform him about Kenny's death. Johnny expressed his disappointment in Sam for failing to protect his son. When Johnny asked how his son had been killed, Sam explained Kenny's plan to do business with Billy. Johnny then asked Sam and Tate to investigate Billy to find out who was behind Kenny's murder. Sometime later, Tate went to Billy's boxing training place to meet the young man. Unfortunately, when he inquired about Billy's whereabouts from one of the boxing trainers, Tate was ignored. This angered him, and it didn't sit well with the people there. Tate went to the extent of strangling the boxing trainer with a piece of rope to force him to reveal Billy's location. At the same time, David hired a hitman to eliminate someone within the next two days. The hitman jotted down his phone number, which David could use to contact him, on a crossword puzzle page in the newspaper. He handed the newspaper clipping to David, who kept it in his pocket. Unbeknownst to him, Charlotte overheard their entire conversation and stole David's money by breaking into his safe. When David met her, Charlotte hugged him on purpose and secretly took the newspaper clipping from his pocket. Meanwhile, Tate went to a junkyard to search for Billy, but Fergus didn't welcome his arrival. Fergus ordered his henchmen to wreck Tate's car using heavy machinery. Tate, furious, began fighting Fergus's henchmen one by one. The brawl came to a halt when Detectives Jones and Monroe arrived, asking about Billy's whereabouts. Fergus, wanting to avoid trouble with the police, eventually informed them that Billy was away. Jones handed him her business card in case he met Billy later. Shortly after, the two detectives took Tate to the police station for questioning regarding his involvement in the bank robbery and Kenny's death. At the police station, Detectives Jones and Monroe expressed their suspicion of Tate, who had taken part in the bank robbery and appeared to be the mastermind behind Kenny's murder due to a dispute over the stolen money. Tate denied all accusations and lied once more, stating that he was at home when Kenny committed the bank robbery. With insufficient evidence, the two detectives eventually released Tate from the police station. Joey then picked up Tate to head to Freedom Bar. Just before Tate entered the bar, he received a call from David, who wanted to know about the sales of the illegal drugs he had supplied earlier. Tate tried to reassure David, assuring him that there was no need to worry because he expected significant profits from the drug sales. After ending the call with David, Tate entered the bar and met a bartender named Stevie. He asked Stevie about Billy's whereabouts, explaining that he needed to find Billy to inform him about Fergus's situation. Stevie informed him that Billy was at his aunt Margot's bar. On the other hand, Charlotte met with one of David's henchmen, who had been given orders to eliminate someone. Without David's knowledge, she handed over a photo of Tate and instructed the hitman to take care of him. After the meeting with the hitman, she took a taxi to the airport. Returning to Tate, as he was about to enter Margot's bar, he noticed Joey entering Platinum Mills Bar. Suspicious of Joey's actions, Tate discreetly followed him into the bar, only to find Billy being assaulted by Moe's henchmen. Back to Charlotte, unexpectedly, the taxi driver turned out to be one of David's operatives assigned to eliminate her. Realizing this, she asked the driver to stop, but he abruptly slammed on the brakes, causing her head to hit the partition between the driver and passenger areas, rendering her unconscious. Inside the nightclub, Tate found himself cornered by Moe's henchmen. When Moe emerged from his room due to the commotion, Tate decided to avoid a confrontation and acted like he was lost heading into Moe's area. Once outside the club, Tate received a mysterious phone call 
instructing him to go to a place called Millennium Mills if he wanted to uncover the truth about what had happened to Kenny. Meanwhile, one of David's henchmen deliberately took Charlotte to a specific location and left her locked inside a car rigged with an explosive device. Realizing the danger she was in, Charlotte cried out for help. At the same time, Tate arrived at the scene and witnessed the taxi cab exploding, resulting in Charlotte's tragic death. Tate understood that it was a setup designed to frame him for Charlotte's demise. He quickly got into his car and left the area. Tate then visited Joey's house to inquire why Joey had been at Platinum Mills Bar. Joey explained that he had merely gone there to enjoy the exotic dance performances. Simultaneously, Stevie met Billy at Margot's bar and informed him about Tate's inquiry regarding Billy's whereabouts. This revelation made Billy realize that Stevie had disclosed his location to someone else. Billy intended to leave Margot's bar, fearing Fergus' reaction when he learned about his involvement in the drug trade that led to Kenny's death. He was also worried about how Fergus would react when he discovered Billy's identity as a transgender woman. However, Margot assured Billy that his father would try to understand and urged him to go home and have a conversation with Fergus. Not long after, Sam met up with Tate and showed him various weapons that could be used for revenge against Kenny's killer. Tate then headed to a junkyard with the intention of getting back at Fergus for destroying his car. While there, Tate threw a grenade towards Fergus and his henchmen, but the grenade didn't explode. Fergus grabbed a rifle and began shooting at Tate, who quickly fled in his car. Shortly after Tate's departure, the grenade that he had thrown earlier unexpectedly exploded under a car, resulting in the death of Fergus's henchmen. Meanwhile, Moe's henchmen confronted Stevie at the bar and used force to try and make him reveal Billy's whereabouts. However, upon searching the place, they realized that Stevie had deceived them. Eventually, Tate managed to locate Billy, who was hiding in Margot's bar after Stevie had directed him there. Tate asked Billy to recount the events leading up to Kenny's death. Billy explained that Kenny was killed during a drug deal at Platinum Mills Bar. After being brutally beaten and regaining consciousness, Billy found himself tied to a chair, while Kenny was suspended with his hands tied. A mysterious man entered the room, and Kenny's anger towards him led to his tragic demise. At the same time, Billy managed to free himself and escape from the abduction site. After sharing their story, Billy helped Tate get inside Platinum Mills by incapacitating one of the guards. Once inside, Tate managed to subdue one of Moe's henchmen and steal a bundle of money and drugs that were being counted by Moe's crew. Around the same time, David contacted Tate about the money he was supposed to deposit. Tate left the room briefly, leaving the bag containing the money and illegal drugs near the entrance. As he was about to return, a bald henchman working for Moe confronted Tate with a knife, relishing the memory of Kenny's death. Tate discreetly pulled out a knife from his sleeve and fatally wounded the bald henchman. Shortly afterward, Tate finally located Moe, who seemed to be relaxing in his room. Just as Tate was about to take action against the drug lord, he was taken aback by the unexpected arrival of Terry, an old friend thought to be dead. Terry confessed to killing Kenny due to his grudge against Tate and Charlotte, who had previously stolen illegal drugs supplied by Moe. In the midst of their conversation, Joey secretly entered the bar, holding a gun to Tate's back. Joey explained that he still held a grudge against Tate for past actions that had left him with a disfigured face. Not long after, Moe's henchmen stormed into the room, bringing Billy with them. Terry took this opportunity to make his exit. Moe ordered his henchmen to eliminate Tate and Billy, but just then, Fergus entered the place with a firearm, threatening to shoot unless Moe released Billy. Amidst the chaos, Joey fired a shot that hit Fergus, sparking a shootout. Tate managed to shoot Moe, gravely injuring the drug lord, while Billy attempted to carry the wounded Fergus out of the room, intending to take his father to the hospital. Simultaneously, Tate had to confront Moe's henchmen. Moe, still conscious, pleaded with Joey to save him, but Joey ignored his boss's pleas. Moe summoned the last of his strength to shoot Joey in the leg before losing consciousness. Tate, having defeated his opponent, suddenly faced another threat from one of Moe's henchmen. Fortunately, Billy came to Tate's aid, fatally shooting Moe's henchmen. 
Meanwhile, Joey managed to escape from the bar on a bus just before Tate could apprehend him. Inside the bar, Billy felt saddened because he couldn't save his father. Before passing away, Fergus expressed his pride in Billy, accepting him as a transgender woman. Shortly after, Billy left the bar, taking Tate's money with him. The next morning, Tate, who had planned to go back home, spotted the police searching his house. He decided to abandon his plans and met up with Sam. Sam gave him some money and a passport to leave the country. Tate told Sam that he would leave once he settled his affairs. The following day, the police were shocked to find Joey's body in the car trunk. In the film's conclusion, it showed Terry meeting with David, his supplier for his illegal drug business. In Ibiza, Terry met with Mo and introduced Greener as their new business partner. Little did they know, Tate was secretly watching them all. The end. Moral lesson from the story, never throw money boxes at your partner, or you might end up losing both your loot and your friend, and make sure the grenades you throw explode at the right time, or things could get very messy.